Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. So as you can see on the screen, what are we talking about tonight? Well, ally, but what does the, the, the top say? What is the, Nate, what does it say? And you. So what is a bystander? Izzy had her hand up. Somebody that stands by and watches what stuff? Okay. Anybody have anything to share, to add to that? Breaking laws, yeah. Nate? Oh, you want to tell us what an upstander is? Okay, what's an upstander? Yeah, it's someone that stands up for someone else, right? Oh, well, how does you, how does the word you, how do you fit into those? You could choose to either be a bystander or a stander. So I have some definitions of what a bystander is and an upstander. And so the bystander says it's an onlooker, a chance spectator, a person who is present but not involved. So what does an upstander do you think need to have within themselves to be an upstander? Do you guys know what what quality? Yes. Confidence. That's one. Anybody else? What else do you need to possess in order to be an upstander? You, you don't have to have leadership, but it probably helps. Definitely. Bravery. What's another word for bravery? Courage. So courage is the quality of mind or spirit that enables one to face difficulty or dilemma. But, but dilemma. What's that? An undesirable or difficult situation. Yeah. So conflict. Conflict is a normal part of life. Do we know what conflict is? Yes. Well, it is something that we all enter or um, have happened to us on a daily basis. Yes. It is something that can can be stressful. It is something that it could be a conflict between you and a sibling or you and a friend, you and a parent, a teacher. Um, but, but it's a normal part of life. And when conflict is handled productively, it can make relationships healthier and even closer. So I can't use my, why is this not? There we go. So bullying. Hmm. How does bullying fit in with bystander and upstander? Yes. Yeah. So bullying is a type of conflict, but it's not a normal conflict as far as it's not healthy. It doesn't lead to healthy relationships. It doesn't make you closer with the people that are bullying you. So Definition of bullying. It's a behavior that makes someone feel upset, uncomfortable, unsafe. It is usually deliberate and repetitive. Forms, I need you guys to listen because there's going to be a quiz at the end, and these are some of the answers. So forms of bullying can be verbal, indirect, physical. So according to expert Dan Wallace, a person is bullied when he or she is exposed repeatedly and over time to negative actions. But bullying is not conflict, like I said a moment ago, because it doesn't result in anything healthy. It's abuse. And there are tests for you to be able to tell if it's bullying or not. And the acronym for one of the tests is PAIN. Hmm. PAIN. Do you, why do you think maybe pain? Why is that? Why does that help you under or remember it? Yeah, because a bullying a bully causes pain, whether it's emotional, physical, psychological. So P, it's imbalance of power. Power. The person engaging in bullying has a real or perceived power over the person they're bullying. A, aggressive. Again, that can be physical aggression, emotional, relational. I is it's intentional. You have to intentionally bully the other person. 
N. It says it on the screen. What do you think N stands for? Well, it, it's another word for it. Mm. Numerous or repetitive. Trick question. See so if you're paying attention. It happens numerous times. It's repetitive. Bullying of any kind. That's cyberbullying. That is um, the other types of bullying that I mentioned earlier. What can bullying cause in the person that's being bullied? What else? That is correct. What else? You jumped to the worst one first, huh? Self-doubt, self, lack of self-esteem. What about depression, anxiety, trouble sleeping? Yeah. So remember how I said there were some tests to see if it's bullying or not, and it's what was the acronym PAIN? There's another one called VIP, verbal. So the hurtful words, offensive language, swearing, discriminatory language can be indirect. You're isolating someone. You're sharing rumors. You're sharing their secrets. Or physical. Hurting someone intentionally. Kicking them, punching them, pinching them, spitting them, slapping. These are all types of bullying. Right? So students who engage in bullying behavior may be more likely to use alcohol and drugs. They are more likely to be involved in criminal activity. They're more likely to abuse their spouses or their children. And those that witness bullying, they have mental health issues too. So as at most bullying incidences, do you think that they happen um, in front of adults or teachers or somebody that can help? No, usually they don't. Usually they happen um, outside of the classroom or outside the home or somewhere where it's just the youth or, or your community of friends and peers. Why do you think? Mm -hmm. mm, that's true. So I want you to stand up if you have a best friend. Okay, sit so back down. I want you to stand up if you belong to a sports team. Sit back down. I want you to stand up if you have seen bullying happen at school. Okay, sit down. I want you to stand up if you've been bullied. Okay, sit down. If you have stood up for someone else and have been the upstander, I want you to stand up. Mm. So I want you to think, you guys can sit down now. I want you to think about these things. You don't have to share them yet, but think about this. Think of the one of those times that you saw someone being treated badly, being bullied. What do you think it feels like to be the one, or maybe you were the one, to witness the bullying, the way that that someone else was being treated? Think about how that felt or might feel if you haven't experienced it. If you've experienced it, how do you respond to something like that? Or how did you respond when it happened? What about how did you feel about your response? Did you respond the way that you think that you should? Do you wish or feel like you should have done something different? And would you do the same thing again? Whether that was being a bystander or an upstander, would you react the same way again if you had to do it over again? Anybody want to share how their feelings with it for any of those questions? Okay. So we are going to talk about the bystander effect. And that is where people don't help someone else in need because they think someone else must have or, or will help them. Is that how you felt when you were ever a bystander? Did you feel like someone else would help them? Is that why you were a bystander instead of an upstander? Think about it. 
So sometimes when a person witnesses something happens, happening, we think that that other person has someone and you walk away, you stand by, you don't take action. You think that the person who is bullying has all the power and there's nothing that you can do. You might hear the angry voices or someone crying and it might scare you and you don't know how to react or interact with the situation. But I have a question for you. What do you think the impact of too many bystanders is? Let me give you a scenario. There's somebody, there, there's someone being beat up by a classmate and there's lots of people standing around that fight, just watching. No one tries to stop it. No one breaks it up. What do you think the impact of those bystanders has on the fight? Yeah? It just keeps happening. What do you think on the opposite end of that if several of those people stepped in? What do you think would happen? Huh? It would break the fight up. If one person tried to step in and break it up, one person was an upstander. Mm. The power is in numbers. Upstanders in multitude have positive peer pressure effects on it. If it was one person, the fight would likely not be broke up. Multiple people working together to enforce positive peer pressure is what's gonna make a difference. So when there is an emergency or difficult situation, the more bystanders there are, the less likely it is that any of them will actually take action and help. We were talking about that peer pressure and the peer pressure works both ways. It could be negative peer pressure where nobody steps up or positive peer pressure where multiple people step up. So we already talked a lot about a bystander. It's someone who sees something, they don't address it, they let it go. What about the upstander again? Someone who recognizes it. They see the wrong, they act to make it right. They understand, see or hear when someone's being bullied and they speak up. So I want you on the piece of paper you have in front of you to write upstander at the top. And if you don't know, how to spell it, it's right up there. An upstander is someone who recognizes. Right, upstander. And I want you to write a definition. It doesn't have to be this one. You can make your own definition as long as it's correct. Something to the effect of someone that stands up for someone, someone that helps, someone that protects, whatever you wanna put as your definition. Now I want you to write on your piece of paper something you yourself can do when you see something happening that you can be an upstander with. What action can you take to be an upstander? You yourself, not just someone in some situation can maybe do this. What can you do to be an upstander? I do want to make comment while you guys are writing these down that it is very important, especially when you are a minority of an upstander, like you don't have a lot of people being an upstander with you. If you see someone being hurt badly physically, you should not try to intervene. You should go get help. There are other instances that you could step in and you can do some things. And we're gonna talk about what, the, when, what those things are. But if someone's being seriously injured, you don't try to do anything, you go get help. Okay, so here are some examples of ways to be an upstander. Let's see if any of you already wrote these down. One, help others who are being bullied. Just help. What would, what would you do to help? You can confront who? The, Bully or the victim? The bully. Maybe not that. Okay. 
Stop harmful messages from spreading. What does that mean? Don't gossip. What about, is that verbally or how else can you spread gossip? Text, socials, social media, yep. How would you start, stop harmful messages from spreading? How would you do that? Don't share it. Absolutely. So get friends involved to support. Remember what I said with upstander in numbers is what makes an impact. So if you get your friends involved to be an upstander with you, that makes an impactful difference. What about this? Anybody write this down? Refuse to be a bystander. Don't be the one standing by watching. Don't be the one standing by videoing. Don't be the one laughing in the corner about a secret that's being shared. Don't be a bystander. What about be friendly to people you don't know? Are you guys friendly to others? What about know what your anti-bullying policy, policy says and talk about it? Every school, every group, every sports team, everything that you've, you're part of has policies. Anti-bullying is more than likely one of them. So you need to know what that says. Support and welcome new students. Has anybody done this? Supported and welcomed a new student when they came in? Make them feel like they're at home, that they're welcomed, that they can find friends. Get your staff involved in anti-bullying. If you maybe don't have a teacher you can go to in the instance that I was talking about when it's someone's being physically harmed, find one, find a teacher, find an administrator at school that you can go to. And learn how to spot the signs of bullying. Remember the ways that you figure it out? What is the acronym for the first one? PAIN. What is the acronym for the second one? VIP. And accept and promote difference. What is one reason some people get bullied? Three of you are talking at once. That is not what I was looking for, but it is a correct answer. Nate, that is also a correct answer. Nate said what I was looking for, but you both gave a correct answer as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times somebody, when they're different, and that could be so many ways that they can be different, they're bullied for that difference. So um, there are several other ways that you can also be an upstander. You can delegate. What do I mean by delegate? That's weird. Have you guys taken CPR? Okay, what's the first step in CPR? 911, delegate. Tell someone to go get more help. If you aren't the one going to get help, delegate someone to. Diffuse. What do I mean by diffuse? Try to de-escalate the situation. Distract. Why, why would I want to distract someone? Both of those, yeah. That's actually very literally accurate. Yes, stand in between them and eat something that is a distraction. You're diffusing and you're de-escalating the situation by doing that. What are some other ways? Does anybody want to share some of the ways they wrote down on their sheet of paper that they you will be an upstander? Yeah. Okay, try to break up the fight. Anyone else want to share? Okay. Some more ideas that weren't listed on this slide are refuse to join in. That actually might be on the slide, um, but refuse to join in. It doesn't involve confrontation. If that's something that scares you or intimidates you, confrontation, refuse to join in. Report bullying to an adult you see. That doesn't involve confrontation. Invite the person being hurt to join your group, your friends, your circle, your peers. 
It might involve a little confrontation. It depends on how you feel about talking to new people. Speak out using an I message. Say, I don't like it when you treat him like that. I want you to stop calling him that name. I'm going to tell a counselor. That's confrontational. Um, be a friend to the person who has been bullied by showing them that you care and distract the, the bully by using a joke or like Ali said, eating some food in between them. So again, I mentioned it earlier, and this is very, very important. If it's one of the few things you take away today, it is important. Positive peer pressure, upstanders in new numbers. You guys know what I'm saying, right? The more upstanders, the better positive peer pressure, correct? So these are famous upstanders. And I'm just going to share a couple of them. Who's this? So he drove an influential change in America for ending segregation for African-American citizens in the 60s. Hello. How did you know that? I'm impressed. Okay. So she campaigned for equality for girls to receive education in her home country of Pakistan. Who's this? Princess Diana, she, oh, it does, doesn't it? Um, she showed compassion for sick children and battered women and spoke for groups such as the Red Cross and AIDS Foundation. Nelson Mandela. The next one is Ben Cohen. I don't know why that one didn't pop up like the others, but Nelson Mandela was the voice of thousands of Black Africans in South Africa to abolish that, which means segregation. And Ben Cohen set up the Stand Up Foundation dedicated to raising awareness of the damaging effects of bullying. So I want you to think about these things while I'm going to read just a couple of them. I have a long list, but I'm not going to read all of them. I want you to think about how you can promote change. How can you keep incidences that you thought about that you've seen happen in your life? How can you keep it from happening again? Think about listening and learning about others' opinions in order to respect them. How about refuse to be part of slurs and hurtful speech and refuse to downplay them? So I told you I had a quiz. Here it is. Number one, speculate on the percentage of students who may be experiencing bullying. Okay, you think 70%, you think 75%. Get your number in your head. Everybody seems to have a different one. 21%. Well, that's true. But it's also what this question doesn't give you too is, is that across the country? Is that in Tennessee? Is that across the world? I actually got this information in this curriculum from an organization. It's, it's on that little thing. I think that it was Boise, Idaho. So that's the number for Boise, Idaho. Boise, Idaho. The city, yep. So what are types of bullying? We talked about this. Yell them out. Physical, verbal, indirect, cyber. There's also relational and personal property damage. I didn't mention that one earlier. Where does bullying happen? Everywhere, anywhere. And away from who? Adults. How often is a bystander present? Eighty percent. Doesn't always happen in front of people, but at least eighty percent of the time, a bystander, somebody who could help, is nearby. 
Do you think anyone could be a bully? Absolutely. Becoming an upstander may invoke risk or courage. Why? Yeah. So what, what's another word for that? Retaliation. You're right. They could retaliate and then bully you or hurt you in response. Um, can bullying be stopped? Okay. What percentage of the cases of bullying do you think can stop, be stopped? Technically, you would think 100%, but really only 57% of cases, will, will the bullying will stop. Yes. Okay. A hundred, but then, okay. Good point. A hundred percent technically could be stopped, but only 57% of the cases, the bullying stops and it can stop within 10 seconds when an upstander intervenes. Did you gather that and the importance of the upstander in that? Within 10 seconds of an upstander intervening, the bullying can stop in 57% of cases. What can happen to a victim if we remain bystanders? All of those are correct. Increased depression, anxiety, aggression, declined academic achievement, and more. How does bullying impact the victim? Yes. Is the person being bullied or hurt? Correct. So bullying in um for a victim can lead to increased levels of ag aggression as well. It can lead to depression, anxiety, low self-esteem, um, sadness, loneliness. They are more likely to skip or drop out of school. What about um I lost my place. Where was I? Thank you. Yes, Katie, the aggressor. So how does bullying affect the aggressor? We talked about that because didn't know we talked about the bystander. Did we talk about the aggressor? The bullier, the bullier. Did we? Okay. What, how does bullying impact the aggressor, which would be the person being the bully? Right. So they are, um, have, are you, you, but I can't talk, sorry. They usually have increased levels of aggression and decreased levels of future optimism, meaning they don't really care about their future anymore and what will happen. So they end up engaging in violent or other risky behaviors in adulthood. They are more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol. They're more likely to be van um, to vandalize and interact with other criminal behaviors. What about the bystander? We talked about that one. Um, what about the school or community that it's happening in? Can become toxic. Yep. Hmm? Um, parts of it, yes. So what might be a short some short-term consequences for not being an upstander? Mm -hmm. Okay, what are some long-term? Regretting it, okay. Anybody else? No? Okay, so I'm going to play this video. Can you see it in the Zoom? Thank you very much.
I do. Hang on for one minute while he helps smooth technical. The world is a dangerous place to live in, not because of people who are evil, but because of the people who don't do anything about it. Albert Einstein. What does that mean? It basically means to be an upstander when faced with a difficult situation. Does anyone here know what an upstander is? Is it the opposite of being a bystander? Exactly. Upstanders are those who recognize a wrong and take action to make it right. How about we take a closer look? An upstander acts when he or she hears an injustice. Hey, by the way, your hair looks good today. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hey, did you see Terry stumbling through the hallway earlier? What a retard. The first step is to ask, did they know what that word means? Did they intend to be hurtful? Hey, did you realize that word makes fun of people with disabilities? What? Choose. Being an upstander is a choice, just like being a bystander is a choice. But doing or saying nothing implies that you agree. Uh, no, I didn't. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. How about we ask Terry if he wants to have lunch with us today? I heard the move to our school has been pretty rough on him. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I'll delete the video too. Teach. By the example of how you live your life. I cannot call myself an upstander if others do not witness me as such. An upstander will act when he or she witnesses injustice. Hey, what are you? Ask, do you know the implications of the abuse you just witnessed? When you witness injustice, will you choose to be an upstander? What are you? Hey, leave them alone. We don't do that around here. We're better than hate. Teach by the example of how you live your life. Anyone here know what an upstander is? stop it all right so there were a couple different um examples in that video that i talked about in this of how to be an upstander what is one act how did one of the upstanders act what did they do They stood up for the person that was going to be hit, that was being pushed down. 
So I'm going to give you a scenario um, and I want you to think about what you would do in this situation. A group of boys have been intentionally bumping into another boy in the hallway and the behavior is escalating to shoving and tripping. There are always others around and some students laugh when it happens. What would you do to be an upstander? Yes. Tell them to stop. And what, what did you notice in the scenario that Blake mentioned when he stood up for the person being pushed around? What else was in that room that you noticed? Lots of upstanders because it is important to have several upstanders to make a positive peer impact. One more and then I have an activity for you to do. A group of girls have targeted one particular girl who has recently come out as gay. They routinely spread rumors and gossip about her character. Many in the school have heard or talked about the rumors. Some students are attempting to make her feel like an outcast. What could or can you do in that situation? Tell them to stop. Anything else? Hang on, you were both were talking. What? Okay. And what did you say, Allie? Comfort them. All right. So I have an activity. Some of the things that we were talking about, we can watch. What are the things that we can do? I want to write down at least three. Thing, I can, I can want, I can want. Without saying more again. So, who is an upstander? The world is a dangerous place to live in, not because of the people who are evil, but because of all the people who don't do anything about it. So you act, you ask, you choose, you teach. Another important acronym. These little things you can take with you so that you can, it can help you be an, uh, remember to be an upstander. Now on those pieces of paper that you just wrote, your I cans, keep them on this paper. You're going to drive yourself. It can be the, your face, it can be your whole body. You draw yourself. So draw yourself, it's going to be about five minutes. And then we're going to um, do something else with that. So while you're drawing yourself, I'm gonna read another scenario. You don't have to share about it, but just think about it. Someone has been posting cruel comments about a student on Facebook and the comments have been making the rounds of the school. The only basis for the comments is that the student looks very young for her age and wears thick glasses. A friend of yours just sent you a link to some of the comments with the message, LOL. What would you do? How can you be a bystander? Just think about it. Keep drawing your, your person yourself. There is a student in school who seems shy and is perceived as somewhat different. Not only is he having difficulty making friends, but most students seem to ignore him. A few make cruel comments and snicker when he walks by. He walks to class alone, eats by himself in the cafeteria, and often sits alone on the school bus. What can you do or should you do to be an upstander?
So I shared a slide. I'm going to read these to you too while you finish up your self-portraits. I shared that slide with some famous upstanders. There are lots of famous upstanders. If you just look around and see um, what people have done in their communities and across history. One of them is Albert Einstein. He was a German born physicist. He was considered one of the most influential psychiat psychiat psychic psychiat uh, physicists. I can't read today, y'all, sorry, of the 20th century. He gained worldwide fame for his general theory of relativity. He received the Nobel Peace Prize. But when the Nazis took power in Germany, Einstein, as an outspoken pacifist, renounced his German citizenship and immigrated to the United States where he resided the remainder of his life. Gandhi. As a key leader in India's struggle for independence, his strategy was nonviolent resistance. He encouraged Indians to refuse to cooperate with the British through acts of civil disobedience. The pressure was effective and the British eventually granted India its independence in 1947. Gandhi's non-violent methods have influenced civil right leaders in the United States and throughout the world. Henry David Thoreau. Thoreau. He was revered as one of American's most notable writers. His essay, Resistance to Civil Government, was an argument for disobedience to unjust government policies and laws. His philosophical, I can't talk today, essays have inspired leaders of protest movements around the world, including Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. If you don't look at that little fact, then. All right, guys. So we're done with our self portraits. If you're not done, you can finish it later. What I want you to do with that self portrait now, those things that you wrote next to the I cans, where you wrote I can and you filled in the blank, I can and whatever you wrote, what are thought bubbles? When you see cartoons, little bubbles over the people's head, write some of those I can statements in thought bubbles around your self-portrait, showing what you can and will be as an upstander. While you write in your I can thought bubbles, I'm going to read some more ways that you can be an upstander that you might have not thought of. I'm trying to find some that I have not read already. How about be a civil learner and participate in your community? Learn about civil policies and things that are affecting your community, maybe not just you, but others in your community. Learn about them. If it's something that's affecting them negatively, write letters, vote for the right leaders, leaders who will support human dignity and equality. Engage in community service because then again, you can learn about the community around you and those that live right next door. Recognize others' strengths. Make friends with diverse students. Don't use labels and don't presume anything. Read about upstanders like we've been doing tonight from current day, from history, from your own personal life. 
Teach that the diversity does not negate the common bonds of humanity, that being different and diverse is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. And learn what makes others in your community different and diverse. Engage in facts to counter biases or misinformation. So if you know that someone's spreading misinformation, find the facts to counter them. Read books, watch documentaries, and travel to other communities to learn and how to foster empathy for others. Anybody have any questions about an upstander or a bystander? So being a positive example, being an upstander is a verb because it's something you do and a noun because it's you. Be a living example. Each of us has the opportunity to make the world a place where every person is valued. And now that you know about bystander and upstander, you don't have a choice to be a bystander anymore because you know how to be an upstander. Okay. And that is it. Thank you so much.